You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Let's talk about creating happiness in your art classroom. For me, this is so important. Right now, at this strange and unusual moment in time, it is essential. It is a major part of creating a positive learning space, uh, creating a strong classroom community, building trust with all your students, and creating a classroom that kids want to be in. Find your inner child. First, I think that it's important to say this. Be your real fun and silly self. For me, I am extra weird and unusual to the point where even the kids stare me at like, what? But that is me. And I'm not saying you should be me. But what I'm saying is be you. You can't be consistent if you're trying to be anything other than you. For me, I wear t-shirts and jeans or yoga pants to work literally every day. But my strange and unusual comes out in the odd way I go about my day. I don't know how to explain it other than I'm just totally weird. Um, well, I just like to be me, you know? So be silly and let you and your inner child out. Whatever that means to you. If you need to dress up, you should do that. If you need to wear a lovely, beautiful dress, you should do that. If you need to act like a cat, you should do that. But what I'm saying is be you and be true to yourself. And don't worry about being someone that is not you, right? Because then it's not natural and it's just, it doesn't feel as good as if you were being yourself. So whatever it means to you, be you. To relate to students you teach, you need to find that inner child and also pull your students' interests into your classroom while also showing yours. For example, in my classroom, you'll see rainbows and art decor, but there are also elements of Harry Potter around my room, and there are unicorns because the kids like that, and I also have like rainbow cats or posters of cats puking rainbows which are like kid friendly ones from like scholastic book fairs um and they're in my classroom why because these are things that are both true to me and true to my students i see myself in my classroom and it makes me happy so i can be bright and energetic for the kids as well these make my students happy so they can see themselves in my classroom and be happy as well. As we say, we have to aim for the green zone. Okay, my next tip is to make sure you shine. Oh yes. Next, let your students shine. And when I say shine, I have to be honest, I immediately think about the cool little superpower that Stephen King refers to in The Shining. Although not the same, you can think about it in a similar way. Let your student's self and identity shine through in your classroom. Find their flavor and their fun way of being and let them shine in your classroom. To bring true happiness in your classroom, I think it is essential that we recognize who students are, what their personality is like, who they are culturally, who they are in terms of how they identify, who they are intellectually. I think we need to let that magic shine. When we think about inclusion, we are thinking about letting our individual differences shine through. To be apparent and real and celebrated, we want to encourage it through including as many culturally and socially rich and diverse individuals in the lessons we teach and the artists we include in our lessons. Remember, civilizations have collapsed in their attempts to make everyone the same. It is not spark joy as... Uh, 
my friend, okay, not my friend, person I watched on Netflix, Marie Kondo, would say, of course, this is true for you as well. It is important for you to shine in your own classroom too. You are not some robot parroting instructions in front of a room. That is not education. And you cannot build connections or trust with students if you don't give them a reason to trust you or see similar interests in you. And to be honest, I don't have many friends that are robots. I do have friends that are people and also animals. And I connect with them because we have similar interests or I find them to be funny or silly or passionate about a similar topic. You know what I mean? So I think if you want to be happy in your class and if you want to shine, then you gotta let that flavor, as I, let it, I like to call it, out. Let it burst forth from you like a sneeze. Except replace the boogers with glitter and awesomeness. But not real glitter, because that's bad for the environment. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is if kids can connect to you, they can feel a whole lot safer and happier in your classroom. For some kids, your classroom is their only safe place. It is their happy being a happy, positive, energetic, silly force is essential in your classroom. Just think, would you want to be in your classroom if you were negative, always down, miserable, and were just regurgitating information? No, I think not. Do you think that builds trust and connections? Nope, not really. So be the force and spark of positivity. Wake up and make a decision to be happy and to be your silly and to be your artist flavor or your own flavor. To let your shine shine. This is the foundation of classroom management after all. You will never win with all your students if they don't trust you. For your most challenging students, Trust is everything. I'm going to repeat that. For your most challenging students, trust is everything. Until they trust you, they won't or may even refuse to respond to any prompts or direction or even acknowledgements. Even my most difficult student that I've taught would continuously interrupt the classroom even when I was just talking to him or trying to say hi to that person. Um, they just didn't want to let me into their world because they didn't trust me. But once I broke through that trust bubble, and let me tell you, it took, it took two months, which is like honestly the longest it's ever <laughs> taken. And I mean this student had a barrier. And he had built it high. <laughs> but I got through. And then it was chill and fun and and strange and unusual. Like everything else that happens in my bubble. Anyway, so start building um, that trust by being transparent and showing your real self. Here is your action item. Write down your strengths. What are you really good at doing? Write down your interests. And your likes. What do you love? Finally, write down what you think your students really love. Now, I want you to brainstorm how you might tweak or adjust things in your classroom or about how you present yourself in your classroom so that you can shine, your students can shine, and that you may spark joy. Now, before we move on, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about my Teachers Pay Teacher store, Misertastic. Hey guys, I just wanted to, to take a pause from this episode to let you know about my art resources for educators. You see, I create art resources for art teachers, general teachers, or homeschooling parents to use in the elementary and middle school levels. 
I really enjoy creating artworks that will target various areas of the curriculum, encourage students to experiment with a range of mediums, and I like to work with themes and topics that are of high student interest. I'm always keeping my eye open for what is all the rage in the student world. I want to save teachers time and therefore I design high quality art lessons that will provide teachers with all the elements they need to teach and implement a lesson successfully. From the lesson plan to rubrics, reflections, and all the steps broken down into visual slides, I've got you covered. My art resources can be found in my Teachers Pay Teachers Store, Ms. Artastic, or by subscribing to my art resource library for art teachers, the Artastic Collective. Find links to my TPT store and my membership in my blog, MsArtastic.com. Now, back to this episode. All right, moving on. Work with student interests. Another way I like to bring happiness into my classroom is through doing art projects around student interests. I'm always watching to see what is trending. It is easy to spot. See what your kids are wearing, bring in, talk about, those kinds of things. You might see these topics on YouTube or see them in stores. A lot of time, the graphics on t-shirts speak a lot about what is trending in the kid interest universe. I'm always on the lookout for what kids like. This is the simplest way to engage kids to get them interested in making art. People are more inclined to do something or make something if it speaks to them or if they see themselves in it. You can also combine kid interests with art history or seasons or holiday art projects. Maybe you create sharks at Christmas or space tacos with pastels and paint. This increased interest and engagement is a definite way to create happiness in your classroom. Action item, brainstorm ways that you can bring student interest and curriculum together in your next art project. After you teach the lesson, reflect on the experience. Were there any differences in this new art project compared to the previous lessons taught? What were the student reactions? Next, we're gonna talk a little bit about social emotional learning, which is another wonderful way to bring happiness and joy into your classroom. I'm interested in keeping kids in the green zone. This, of course, is a zone of regulation reference. You can include some SEL, which is social emotional learning, in your classroom through including things like meditation or art therapy themed lessons. I like to start off my classes with some guided meditation while drawing or through mindful art starts where we do deep breathing, focus on the moment, and then draw to zen or calming music for five to 10 minutes. This is especially good to start right away as you wait for all your students to settle in. That way, when you go to start your lesson or learning, the kids are settled calm and in the green zone, hopefully. This is a great to do at the higher level classes where class time is longer for shorter 30 minute lessons um, or classes then you can simplify it to just deep breathing at the start of class. Rest your eyes, deep breath in, slowly release, inhale deeply, and slowly release. One more deep cleansing breath in, And exhale slowly. This will help students transition at their pace from whatever they were doing before to making art. You can also try incorporating some art therapy type art lessons into your class. I'm not saying to instruct art therapy, I'm saying to be inspired 
by art therapy type art lessons in your class to bring some social emotional learning or SEL into your art classroom. Try searching up some different um, SEL art lesson ideas or therapy ideas on Google and Pinterest and see what you come up with. Try a few lessons and see how it goes with your students and if it sparks joy or lets your students shine. Just remember, you are not a therapist or a registered art therapist, unless of course you are. Then this does not, of course you should do that. But remember that you are not instructing that. You are being inspired by and trying a few ideas from it. Well, these were some of my tips for creating art, for creating happiness in your classroom. I would love to hear some of your ideas. Share your thoughts by giving me a shout out on Twitter or on Instagram or your other favorite social media platforms. I am always at Ms. Artastic. As well, I'm always looking for some art teachers to come on this podcast to share some of their cool tips and ideas. If you would like to join me for an interview in the future, please email me. Um, you can find my contact form on my blog, MsArtastic.com, or you can email me at MsArtastic at gmail.com. I would love to hear your ideas, and you can totally come on and share some wonderful strategies um, or different inspiration or teaching strategies or art lesson ideas to other art teachers. So if you have something that you think is really awesome that you want to share, please give me a shout out. I would love to bring you on. We can chit chat, talk, and it could be a future podcast. Um, and if you are looking for more art resources or would like to find the show notes to this podcast, please, 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 please make sure you head on over to my blog at MsArtastic.com and there you can find the show notes in the podcast tab or find art lessons or you can find links to all the other arts, other aspects of Artastic Nation, whether it's my YouTube channel, my TPT store, the Artastic Collective, everything that I run in my, you can think about my blog as my hub. It'll take you everywhere. All right, so my lovelies, I will see you in a couple weeks. And for now, um, enjoy making art with kids.